Hi, I'm Cliff Hildreth. If you're watching this video, you're probably getting ready to search for a new home. Well, congratulations, that's great. Owning a new home is one of the greatest feelings in life and probably one of the biggest decisions you'll ever make. But before you do, there are a few things you should know and do to make your buying experience more enjoyable and more importantly, less stressful. Once you decide you're going to buy a home, the excitement can overtake you and you just want to start looking at properties right away. I understand that. I was that way as well when my wife and I started looking for our first home. Before, by the way, I was in the real estate business. And some of the things we ran into really created a lot of stressful situations that now that I know what we should have done, didn't need to happen. So let's go over the basics. First, have a vision in place before you start your house hunt. Actually have several visions in place. Decide what you want, or more importantly, what you need in a home. How many bedrooms, bathrooms, the area you want to live. Once you have your must-haves, then add the wants. Maybe a big yard, a pool, gated neighborhood, and so forth. Next, look at your possible options, or what we call substitutions. For example, you'll probably get a bigger lot or yard if you're in the suburbs. But if you work in the city, are you willing to commute to have that? Or vice versa, would you accept a smaller yard if it cut the time off your commute? Would you take a smaller home in a more expensive neighborhood if schools are better for the kids? These are the examples of what I mean by substitutions. Have a financial vision, complete with a clear picture of what your total income and expenses look like in the after home buying view, including what you pay out for your home and related expenses like HOA dues and homeowners insurance, maybe even commute expenses if any. Number two, see a mortgage lender and get pre-approved. This is an important one, maybe the most important. This will let you know how much you can qualify for and what type of loan is available to you. It will also let you know, and this may sound strange, if you can even buy a home. I know it sounds strange, but I can't even calculate over the years how many home buyers think they are fine and get well into the process just to find out they can't get a loan for the home they want, or worse, they can't get a loan at all. There was some kind of credit issue they were unaware of, or their expenses exceeded the amount lenders would accept. It can stop the process in its tracks and is extremely frustrating and disappointing, especially if you found that home you love. Secondly, many, if not most sellers, require pre-approval before they will even accept an offer on their home if you decide to make one. They want to sell their home and don't want to waste their time waiting just to find out you don't qualify. If you wait to start the pre-approval process after you find a home, which can take a week or more, the seller may accept another offer while you're going through that process. Again, causing unnecessary disappointment. Everyone in the process is happy to work with someone who is already qualified to purchase the home they want. Once you're pre-approved, start a conversation with your real estate agent with a clear understanding of what you're looking for and you'll be much less likely to get derailed. Clearly communicate your wants, needs, goals, and financial boundaries to your professionals, telling them what you can afford rather than trying to shoehorn your financial plans into a one-size-fits-all mortgage. With a vision, the temptation of the uber-low price but completely inappropriate home will not lure you into buying the wrong place for your needs, nor will an amazing home that is simply out of your personal price range, no matter how great a value it is, for the money. Next, be reasonable. Affordability doesn't necessarily mean you can get every single thing you want and name your price. The fact is, even people who spend millions on their homes don't always get everything they want. I've seen buyers insist that they need X number of bedrooms and Y number of bathrooms in move-in condition for a price that is just not going to happen. In this current climate, sellers will not give away their homes and want a price reasonably close to market value or even above. If your agent has shown you home after home that is what you want but has sold for more than you want to spend and you're confident that you can find or cut a better deal and you just happen to be a brilliant negotiator, you might be at risk of falling into this trap. There are deals to be had, but if you don't stay grounded in reality, you'll end up chasing your tail and missing out. If you insist on dropping 20% off the price of every home you like and you're going to end up looking and looking at infinitum. You can sometimes make an offer below asking price but be reasonable. If you've been house hunting for months and months on end, your agent keeps trying to tell you that you should search in a lower price bracket, 
you have repeatedly gotten outbid, or you just can't seem to find the precise home you seek in the location you want at the price range you seek. At least consider the possibility that you might have an outsized wish list for your budget. Take a step back, revisit your vision, and remind yourself what's really important. It's okay to save some must-haves and deal-breakers for your next home. But remember, there are at least two people involved in every home purchase, the buyer, you, and the seller. And the seller doesn't have to take your offer just because you think he should. In the internet age, you certainly may begin your search online, but once you're ready to actually begin looking at properties, get a local agent to brief you on the local market. Now more than ever, with so much information on the internet, much of it wrong, it's essential to have a focus on the information and strategies that will get you what you want. Whether it's an amazing deal on a home you've always wanted, or simply success at becoming the owner of your first home at a price you never thought would be possible. Otherwise, you'll end up all over the place, spending your time, money, and sanity getting worked up over a distressed property or properties that aren't yet for sale, trying to negotiate deals with sellers who are in no position to cut them, and having your lowball offers on bank-owned properties rejected time after time, or worse, looking at properties that are no longer for sale. On that note, I always tell my buyers not to look on Realtor.com, Homes.com, Redfin, or other real estate websites to pick out the homes they want to see. These sites are frequently wrong on the status of the properties. I've seen properties on some of these sites listed as available that were sold a year ago and have not been taken off the sale or updated. Again, it's unnecessary frustration. I'll have access to the area MLS, which are generally updated daily, hourly, or in the case of my MLS, every half hour. I have the ability to set up an automatic search that sends listings to your email box each morning that match your search criteria. No other sites will have better, more accurate access to the available homes than I do. This may go better with number two above. Don't let a news story about a guy in Minnesota who got a home for $3.27 be the basis for your entire home buying strategy. Instead, you need a local agent who has a track record of helping people. The market's hot right now, and generally speaking, sellers are in charge with many markets and some neighborhoods within markets seeing multiple offers. Once you have a vision in place, keep it. Don't let your acupuncturist, your shoe repair guy, or your mom's dry cleaner convince you that your strategy is all wrong, that you could get a place for cheaper, or that the seller should absolutely do every re single repair, or you should walk away from the deal. Many would-be buyers lose out on great homes because they take negotiating advice from their holistic veterinarian over that being offered by their agent. Your dry cleaner, no matter what he tells you, doesn't know the market better than the guy or gal that works in it every day. Read everything. Good faith estimates, contracts, disclosures, inspection reports. There's a long list of multi-page documents that are very easy to just sign when you're in the heat of the hunt and think you're on the scent of an amazing deal. Now, I'm not suggesting you ask for a week-long pause button to read every document. Rather, read them when you get them. Most of them aren't that long and ask questions, and keep asking your realtor until you understand the documents. Many buyers this year will make offers on more than one home before they get into contract on the one. Every contract is different, however, so it behooves you not to go on autopilot, just skimming the papers as you might otherwise. Also, get an inspection. Inspection reports might reveal red flags and condition issues that you'd normally expect to see in the seller disclosures. It's especially critical in these situations to fully understand as much as you can about the property, your loan, and your obligations and due dates under the contracts. Next, stop your mental accounting and do the actual math on paper. Mental accounting refers to the tendency we humans have to do math in our heads, separating things like easy money, like so-called instant equity from buying a home for less than it's supposedly worth, from hard-earned wages and salary and making spending decisions differently from these different mental accounts. On the scent of a good deal and in the heat of the hunt, even the most meticulous home buyer can go up a few thousand in offer price to beat out other buyers. No problem, right? Well, but then when the inspector uncovers a few needed repairs, they make a mental guess as to what they'll cost and add that in again mentally. Then when the lender requires a few extra thousand bucks then expected to close, that goes on top, but again, 
only mentally. And mental money tends to stretch a lot farther than real money does. So you can see how it's possible to break the bank when you thought you were in great shape because you scored such a great purchase price for the property itself. Even if you hate budgets with every iota of your being, buck up on this one project, pull out the calculator or open up a spreadsheet and keep track of every line item. Get actual repair bids during your inspection period to the extent possible and get your math mojo on. It's fine to buy and incur these overages here and there, but keeping track of them is key. You know what I like to say, surprises are for birthday parties, not for real estate transactions, and not for your bank account either. Keeping a strict tab on the expenses you incur during the transaction, or will need to incur afterwards, will save you so much drama later. Well, that covers the basics. Now I know you can never anticipate every issue, and there may very well be something that pops up unexpectedly that you'll have to deal with, but if you do the things I've suggested, and you have a competent realtor working with you, it will make the process much smoother, quicker, and less stressful. I would love to help you find your next home, and I will always work with your best interest in mind, not mine. If you have any questions or just want to talk about the real estate market, even if you're not ready to buy or sell right now, please don't hesitate to give me a call or shoot me an email or text. I'm always happy to help in any way I can. Remember, together we can make it happen.